Good evening, good morning. Uh, welcome to Module 5 of PADM 404 here at Homeland Security, our uh, College of Professional Studies here at uh, Penn State University. Uh, I want to start off with just some uh, announcements. Uh, job talk, a lot of you have expressed interest in it, and we're going to do it. We'll just do it after the uh, last paper is due. So that last week of April, uh, your paper will do, be due that, that Sunday, and we'll have that job talk sometime that week. Uh, that will just allow you to focus on your paper, and then we can just wrap up the, the course with your future endeavors. And I'll talk again, military transitions. I'll talk intelligence community, homeland security, working in the defense, and working in the defense community as well. So that will occur at the end of April. Analysis. Um, I'm getting a lot of questions on this, and I, I, I want to start off by just saying very few people get hundreds on. In fact, nobody's gotten a hundred on the paper uh, or on these short information papers this semester. Uh, I think I'm a little different than your other professors who tend to might grade uh, at least the discussion or the information papers a little bit easier. Uh, I, I don't. Um, no one gets a bad grade unless it's really bad. But you're not going to get a, a perfect 50 either unless it's something that, that I will take to the Department of Homeland Security tomorrow. Um, so make sure, I just want to make sure you're, you're cognizant of that. Uh, I also want to just make sure, again, when I say analysis, the best way to put it, well, one, I'll send out an example paper tomorrow so you can see what I'm looking for. Um, but I'm talking about answering those questions in the lead-in. So... You know, I, I mentioned to some of you, thicken your lead-ins, meaning if you're going to talk the Homeland Security Grant Program, uh, making sure you talk how you spend a paragraph talking about, uh, as a lead-in, what this program, what gap it fills, and how it improves the overall Homeland Security enterprise. And you think for yourself what that gap was, and then you go into... All right, how much it's funded, how much, you know, what its definition, how much it's funded, you know, those types of, of, of uh, more concrete examples. So that's probably where, you know, any differential in grading occurs is, is those lead-in paragraphs uh, for the information papers. But again, I'm not, um, you know, it, it, it's not something you should... You know, some people worry, but I understand it's it's great. I would say that if you really want to do a bang up job, focus on the last paper, focus on the example I sent out, and that's where I will, you know, credit you more for the analysis you bring in and how you bring in all these different uh, portions of the class. So, uh, but I'll send an example out tomorrow so you you have a, a better idea. Okay, so re review of past week. Uh, my my favorite subject. Uh, intelligence sharing um, and I think one of the big things that we, we, we hit on well some of you talked about was the gap between f uh, federal and law uh, the federal government and all its intelligence communities and then uh, intelligence at the law enforcement related uh, or in the uh, law enforcement realm in a perfect world in my national security utopia you would be able to, if a guy comes in and he's got a suspicious travel record and that's documented by TSA or Customs and Border Protection, that information that that person has a suspicious travel record, they've traveled back and forth to Yemen or they've spent six months overseas in Sudan or in Somalia or the country surrounding that, that information would be disseminated down to local law enforcement so they can do follow-up. That's not happening, um, and that's, I think, a, a pretty big gap in our uh, law enforcement uh, capabilities. Um, better yet, we can, if we can integrate whether a certain person has a suspicious travel history, a suspicious phone call history, um, and then coordinate that with what local law enforcement is is. Or, or disseminate information to local law enforcement. So when local law enforcement goes on patrol, they know the guy in that house that that cop patrols every day has got suspicious travel history, suspicious social network, suspicious call history. Again, that's uh, 
maybe utopian and maybe it's even a little bit uh, Orwellian, but I think that's the way to, to, you know, one of the big gaps is the gap between federal government intelligence collection and law enforcement. Uh, the other gap that I see, and you see this in some of these, these incidents, is someone who's suspicious, someone who's watchlisted, and then they're being arrested. Um, and you, you'll hear the term uh, for several of these incidents, the Orlando shooter, the uh, Paris attacks in late 2005, the Belgian uh, Brussels airport attacks in 2016, the Fort Hood shooter in Dal Hassan. They were all on our radar, so to speak. Uh, however, they were suspicious. Some of them were on watch lists. The Boston Marathon bombers were on watch list, but they didn't do enough to get arrested. And that's a big gap in our intelligence and our law enforcement capabilities. Um, bottom line is because we live in a free country. Uh, the Dal Hassan didn't really do anything to get arrested until he started to open fire in that uh, soldier processing center at Fort Hood. Uh, the Zarnaya, the younger, the older one was a criminal, but the younger one didn't do anything until he dropped that bomb at the Boston Marathon. And they might have been suspicious, and they might have been put on watch lists, but again, they weren't arrested, and unless you arrest them, you can't stop them from engaging in terrorist activity. Uh, so that's, again, a, a, a gap that has continued to haunt us uh, to, to this day, the Orlando shooter is probably the most uh, the most recent incident. And then the fusion centers. I'm going to send a video out uh, with this uh, with this announcement uh, about the fusion centers. And they're supposed to do things like close these gaps that I talked about earlier. Uh, but there's problems with the fusion centers. A lot of times they're uh, redundant redundant to the Joint Terrorism Task Forces that the FBI sponsors. Uh, sometimes they do a lot of work that has nothing to do with counterterrorism, uh, and they cost a lot of money, you know, upwards of one to two billion dollars uh, to set up and then several hundred million dollars a year to, to operate. Uh, so I'm going to send out a quick video of that, and what I'm going to say is uh, if you want to use this in your final paper, uh, I am more than willing to say yes. Whether you want to talk about the gaps that I just mentioned here, whether you want to talk about the efficacy of the fusion centers as a way to either close the gaps or, or even get rid of because they're too costly, I will let you, you discuss that uh, or intelligence sharing in, in detail uh, in, this, uh, in, in your final paper. So I want to make sure that you, you have that understanding. So preview next model, risk. Uh, there's all sorts of ways to measure risk. I think the Congressional Research Service report uh, covers risk and the evolving nature of risk and then all the, the forced allocations of money that are outside of, of the risk spectrum. Uh, that, I think, is probably the key, the key thing. So focus in on that, on that paper. Um, and again, that, that covers the evolving nature of risk. And then your your assignment is a graphic presentation that shows allocations of, of uh, expenditure based on risk. And all it is, you're going to show me a graph, uh, an information product that best captures how you want to uh, display allocation of resources. So with that being said, uh, let me know if there's any questions. And I look forward to, uh, we've got a little bit of time you know, we've got spring break and we've got a break. So make sure that uh, I've opened up some of the uh, inboxes or drop boxes. Uh, make sure we catch up this past next couple of weeks uh, with, with any assignments. And again, you got a few weeks to do this because of spring break and, and break. So look forward to discussion points and I'll see you. Uh, if there's any questions, please let me know.